touch sensitivity, MIDI box, MIDI cable, MIDI data, MIDI USB, audio signal, DI box, those layers stack, brings the low end up in, and that's the mids. Who's gonna write some lyrics to this song? Hey guys, this is Yusuf. Welcome to part four of the music production series where I teach you how to record music, how to produce music step by step. We're building up a track. So far in episode one, we did drum programming. Episode two, we did recording acoustic guitar. Last episode, we did recording bass guitar. And this episode, we're gonna do uh, Nord recording, keyboard recording, piano sounds, keyboard sounds. <laughs> So we're gonna do all things piano, keyboard re related today. I'm gonna talk to you about some of the technical aspects of setting up your keyboard and dialing in some sounds. First thing I wanna talk about, the type of piano we're using. As you can see, we're not using an acoustic piano. We're using an electric piano. Right, okay, so uh, you can record acoustic piano, uh, again, if you have access to a nice acoustic piano and a nice big room and a nice studio, I would highly recommend using that. And the mic technique that you're gonna use for that is very similar to the mic technique you might use for uh, recording acoustic guitar, which I showed you that technique uh, last time. So uh, that gets a little more technical and I don't have a acoustic piano to show you. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Uh, honestly, it's a lot messier trying to record a piano with a mic and Nowadays with sampling, the, the piano sampling has just gotten so better over the last couple decades that you don't even, especially with this instrument, this Nord, that we're gonna be recording with this Nord, uh, you don't even need the, the acoustic pianos and the, even the electric pianos, the Rhodes pianos and the Wurlitzers and the B3 organs. It all does it in this. This is the brain of my keyboard setup. As you'll see, I have two pianos. Uh, the, the Nord basically gives me all the nice sounds um, so it lets you basically have, you have an organ section here and then you have some pianos here. You have different piano sounds that you, and we'll go through these in a, in a bit. The thing about these Nords, they're very expensive. So if you want a full 88 keys, full sized, uh, keyboard with touch sensitivity, that's going to be like a couple thousand dollars or more. So that's a big, big fat bill and they're worth it. but. Personally, I prefer to save money. <laughs> so that's why I have the two keyboards set up. And I did a video showing you how I set up this two tier keyboard stand uh, and I'll link it in the card above. So the way I do it is I have these two, I, I, I spent a lot of time at the music store picking out the right piano that had the right feel for me. Roland's feel really good, I noticed, but they're also kind of expensive. This is a Yamaha and it felt pretty good. And, and the, the price was, was decent on this, uh, I think, P85. Now they have the P125, very similar series. Uh, you're hearing right now the, the sounds off the keyboard itself. I don't record with those sounds. We're gonna set up the studio in a second and show you the, the sounds I use off the Nord. And so anyways, before we get to that, I just wanted to say, you know, the, the thing about this piano, it has touch sensitivity on it. So it feels like a real piano. So down here on the low notes, it's gonna feel heavier on my hand versus up here on the light notes, it's gonna feel really light. And that's how a real acoustic piano feels. And you never get quite the feel of an acoustic piano on one of these, but it gets you like 90, 95% of the way there. That's plenty for doing, you know, your basic, piano riffs it gives you the nice feel and, and vibe on the nord that i got this is not tension this is only semi-weighted they call this <coughs> fully weighted semi-weighted uh i did th i did that on purpose because this lets you most organs uh real organs quote unquote real hammond organs and b3s and things like that they are semi-weighted so that you can do all these slides and runs and and you don't have weighted keys on the organ so i have one keyboard for the organ feel and one for my piano feel so when I play organ, I'll play it up here. When I play pianos, I'll play them down here and they'll feel weighted. But the sounds will be coming out of the Nord. So that's uh, a little bit about touch sensitivity. If you have any questions or comments about that, people have a lot of opinions about these things, just let me know below. So how do I get those sounds? Uh, the way I do it is MIDI routing. So I have a MIDI box. Oh, it's, you can see it's on. Um, uh, basically, you have these things. They look like this. It's called a MIDI cable. It's a five pin cable. It's been around since the, I think, late 70s, early 80s. 
basically, uh, you should never buy a piano that doesn't have, or, or I mean, digital keyboard that doesn't have MIDI in it. And that's a deal breaker for me, honestly. If it doesn't have MIDI IO, MIDI input output, uh, I won't buy it. The way that this routing works is this piano, I'm sending MIDI out. So I would connect this cable MIDI out of this, would send MIDI out uh, to the MIDI in of this. And this is just a box I have that's a MIDI splitter. Uh, th this is the MIDI out coming from this piano. And it goes in here and this box lets you split up to uh, take one MIDI and split it into up to four signals. So one of them is going into here. So any, anything I play, any notes I play into here, you'll see right here. Any notes I play into the big piano, see? Now you see it's receiving MIDI data. Even though I've turned the volume off this big one, you'll see it's receiving MIDI data. And then the other one I have split to go to the computer uh, separately. Uh, this is via a MIDI to USB cable. This is called a, a MIDI Sport by M Audio. It's pretty good, $20 or so. They probably have a newer one. I got this 15 years ago. It'll have two little MIDI I.O. things. I'm not using the other side of it. I'm just using the one side uh, right now. And that connects you to USB. So that won't actually record any audio. So if I was to record that, I would only be recording the MIDI data into my DAW. Uh, this this one, the MIDI that's going from this piano to this piano, it's it's going from here to there. Then it's getting those nice sounds off the Nords, which I'll show you in a second. And the the Nord is actually outputting via audio signal. Uh, this is similar to how we record bass, except here we have in stereo we have a left out and a right out, and they go down to this thing, DI box. We saw the DI box last time. So those two quarter inches go to two XLRs, which then go to two microphone preamps. It's kind of like recording two bass guitars. And if you have questions about or, or want to know about that, check out that bass guitar recording video where I showed you what a DI box is and why you need one. And you definitely want one for recording a, a digital piano or a digital keyboard like this, especially this Nord. Okay, and as promised, you see the difference in piano sounds? That versus... Right? <laughs> it's a little, that's the Nord. It's a little more professional sounding in the piano. And the Rhodes sound. Anyhow, let's go over to the computer. I'm gonna add a couple different piano layers. Maybe let's add uh, two to four. And I'm gonna make them stereo tracks. And uh, I always record my keyboards in stereo. It gives you the chance to make them mono later. Uh, my instrument, the Nord, is is a stereo instrument, so some uh, effects are meant to be in stereo. So I'm just gonna change the routing to the routing that I have in the session here. And there she is. And now we're gonna do gain staging. We don't want it to come up too hot, so uh, it's a little bit low. So if you see, I'm just gonna turn the volume knob up a little on the Nord, and there we go. I think that's good enough for keyboard. Let's dial in our piano sound. And then let's see, I got some presets for organ here. We might, we might have to bump that volume up when it comes time to record organ. If you have uh, questions or you want to know more about gain staging, I explained it more thoroughly in my previous two videos, how to record, record acoustic guitar and how to record bass. I show you in depth how to get a nice gain staging. Let's see what we got. sound right now. Maybe it's going to turn it up a little. Piano. That's a nice sound. I'm just messing around. Okay, let's, okay let, let's, not, let's not use that. Let, let's record it for real now. Okay. Getting into those rhythms there. So now that was the first layer. 
I like to layer it up with the pianos. Um, uh, I do that with acoustic guitar sometimes too, but uh, I keep it simple in this track for you. Uh, but with pianos, I really do like to layer. That's why I did a relatively simple acoustic piano layer. And now we're gonna do some Rhodes and some organ and maybe some other little thingies. Um, but I like to keep the first layer of piano kind of, you saw I was like really dialing into the rhythm. And I think it's important to just have that solid glue of the track. So let's let's dial in a Rhodes sound and get a, some electric piano. Rhodes with an H, not an O. And let's call this piano. You wanna always label and color code your tracks. Um, you see how I have different colors on track? It just helps keep things organized better. Let's dial in our Rhodes sound. I have a nice preset that I use. I use the second model, whatever one that is. And sometimes I put a little tremolo on it. See how that adds. Here's without. Wait, oops. Here's without. Now with. We're just gonna have to see, and you can dial that up or down to taste. It's just an effect. This Nord has a lot of effects on it. You have chorus, phaser, you can put an amp on it, put pans and Ottawa's and tremolos. I like to use a little tremolo on the road sometimes. Let's see, it doesn't always call for it. It's just to taste. Some tracks will call for effects. Let's try it without to start. See how those layers stack? All right. It sounds like one piano, but it sounds thicker. And I'm, I have a little more freedom now rhythmically because my first track was real dialed in. Sometimes I'll use, I'll, I'll, instead of Rhodes, I'll use a Wurlitzer. Let's see what that sounds like. You just trial and error, trial and error with pianos. I don't really like the Wurlitzer on this. So let, let's go back to the Rhodes. Uh, let's go back to this Rhodes preset. I'd use it on a lot. Just, you know, a real Rhodes, uh, similar to an acoustic piano, you would it, a real Rhodes piano would have an amplifier and you would mic it similar to how you would uh, record an electric guitar actually, which we'll show you in the next uh, video how to record electric guitars. They're super heavy, just like an acoustic piano. It's hard to haul around, it's real expensive equipment and it's hard to maintain. You don't need it, they've sampled it. That sounds so good. Another trick is uh, I record everything in mono uh, and just do stereo panning at the very end. Uh, it just a lot of master mixers have do that and I find that it really lets you focus on the levels and the balances between things. We'll get into mixing later on in the tutorial. Okay, that was the Rhodes layer. You saw how uh, it beefed it up. You know, I, 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 was, I tried to leave some space too, careful not to um, step too much on the toes of the piano. I kind of like to play off the piano and, and try to make them sound more like one piano. If you listen to Stevie Wonder, especially like the beginning of Superstition or something, he's got like four or five clavinets going, but it sounds like one, even though if you listen real carefully, he's got like maybe six going on. You could never do it even live. Uh, but it sounds like one instrument, one voice. And that's how I, I, try, I try to kind of pad my pianos and rows. Uh, and now let's add the juice, the glue, and this is the fun part. Let's dial in some organ settings. So come on over. <laughs> I have a few presets. These these uh, behave like the draw bars would on a on a real organ. That brings in the high end up and down. That brings the low end up and, and that's the mids. I'm using a B3 uh, with a fast. You could make it slow. See how the vibrato got kind of slow. Now it's fast. And you can use different types of, of organs, different different tones. Uh, you have different settings for how the responsiveness of the keys, percussive, many settings uh, uh, on this Nord. And this is an older one. They even had this is the Nord Electro Three. Uh, if you're recording Nord today, I would I would recommend uh, picking up one of the newer ones. Let's see which organ we want to dial in. Let's just play the track and try a few different ones.
Okay, so we settled on this uh, preset I have. Kind of a more chill organ sound, so let's let's roll it. And with organ sounds, less is more. So I was using both hands on the keyboard and playing maybe, I don't know, six, seven, eight notes at a time. Organ, you know, two notes, three, four at the most. You know, you can play it with one hand. Like, I, I try to be real subdued with organ. It's a real strong instrument. That was the B3 organ on the Nord Electro 3. So you see how simple it is uh, to layer a few different piano parts. You don't have to be a master pianist. I'm definitely not a master keyboard player, uh, but with something like this Nord Electro, when you record, you can get some really great killer sounds, uh, stack them up, use basic chords, you know, learn a few different inversions. You saw I was just the organ, I was just doing two, you know, one hand most of the time. I'm playing two notes most of the time. And that's, that's more than enough, you know, for organ. Uh, for the Rhodes and the pianos, I wasn't all over. I wasn't doing Beethoven and crazy stuff. I was just playing kind of pads and adding little fills here and there, little, little gr grace notes. That's what gives your, your keyboards nice, uh, subtle, you know, pad kind of like in this track. That's what's called for. Uh, other songs may be more piano driven, so the piano may, may be busier. And in that case, I would roll back the other instruments. The guitars would be more of like pads, and they would just be more strums and open. But right for this song, it called for kind of paddy, kind of open, kind of uh, piano sounds. It's a good groove. Oh, yeah. Who's gonna write some lyrics to this song? Maybe a female voice on top of this track.
So that's, you know, we're building the track up. Next week, we're going to do some electric guitars, add even some even more flavors and layers and overdubs. So check back. If you like this content, please subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. Please stream my music on Spotify, Yusuf, Y-U-S-I-F. It really helps me a lot. Do these tutorials to help you guys record. If you have any questions about anything I went over or you want to see anything more in depth, comment below. Let me know. Request any videos. Just let me know what you think about this tutorial's feedback. How can I do it better? What do you want to see?